Welcome, everyone, uh, for our second presentation of the session. Uh, so this talk is titled, uh, Help uh, the Wanted, wait, Solutions to the Unemployment Crisis of Formerly Incarcerated Individuals. So uh, without further ado, let's welcome these presenters. One-fourth of the nearly five million formerly incarcerated individuals in this country are unemployed. This number is staggering and it needs to be addressed. We're Help the Wanted and we're seeking to find a solution to the unemployment crisis of formerly incarcerated individuals. I'm Jackie Hansen. I'm Andrew Demadio. I'm Alexandria Natsky. I'm Mason Alrich. And I'm Julia Scheringer. For formerly incarcerated individuals in this country, it is virtually impossible for them to find jobs. Let me repeat that number from earlier. One fourth of anybody who has ever been to prison in this country cannot find a job. This is five times the Wisconsin unemployment rate, according to Wisconsin Watch. And in 2008, when 27% of formerly incarcerated individuals couldn't find jobs, this was worse than peak unemployment in the Great Depression in 1933. This is due largely to stigma surrounding formerly incarcerated individuals, as well as a lack of training and education. So like Jackie said, this is a really important issue that's affecting a lot of people across the US. One reason why these individuals have such a hard time finding employment is due to a lack of education. Many prisoners do not have much education past a high school degree, and several have yet to receive their high school diploma. This is problematic because research has shown that as the amount of education a person has received increases, the unemployment rate then tends to decrease. While in prison, some people are offered the opportunity to gain an education. However, US prisons are currently extremely overcrowded, so oftentimes there's just not enough resources to go around. An example of this can be seen from this graph. So this graph comes from a 2014 survey which surveyed inmates on the level of education they had received while in prison. As you can see, 58% reported that they did not receive any further education. And of that percentage, many reported that they had wanted to receive an education, they just hadn't been given the opportunity. Along with not being properly educated, many formerly incarcerated individuals do not have any work experience to put on a resume. While in prison, some people are offered the opportunity to work. However, a lot, of these time, a lot of times these jobs are often very meaningless, such as doing laundry or cleaning floors, um, and those aren't really benefiting them in any way. They're not preparing them for any job that they really will have. Along with that, many inmates report that while in prison, the jobs they had never required them to use the necessary literacy or numeracy skills, which are important for the workforce. Many of these jobs are often involuntary and they are forced to do them. Therefore, they're often seen as less of an opportunity and more of just a form of punishment. Some prisons offer what's called a work release program. This is essentially where prisoners can leave for the day and go to work. However, not all prisons are currently offering this. And a lot of times, there are very few spots open due to a lack of resources and overcrowding. So one place in particular that's currently facing a lot of these issues is Kettle Moraine Correctional Institute. This is a medium security all-male prison located in Sheboygan County, Wisconsin. Kettle Moraine is currently extremely overcrowded with over 1,100 inmates and an operating capacity set at just 783. Kettle Moraine also only has or has one-fourth of their inmates that do not have a high school diploma. Along with that, one half have not received much education past high school or have had very minimal training or work experience. Kettle Moraine offers people the opportunity to gain an education. However, there are not many people pursuing a secondary education and there are only six vocational training programs. Kettle Moraine offers some of their inmates the opportunity to work. However, like I mentioned before, a lot of times this work is involuntary they are paid for this work, however, they're only paid five cents an hour. Kettle Moraine is also, also was not offering any work release programs to their inmates at this time. So one thing that our group has had the opportunity to do 
is speak with a manufacturing manager who is responsible for hiring employees at his place of work. He has reported to us that oftentimes when going through applications, when he comes across somebody who has been previously convicted, their application is often passed along because they do not have enough education, they do not have enough work experience, and they have not had the chance to prove themselves and show that they can be just as competitive as everybody else. And therefore, these people have a hard time finding employment, and unfortunately because of that, what happens is they will resort back to a life of crime, and oftentimes they will end up right back in prison. As previously mentioned, lack of education, job training, and work experience, as well as the negative, oops, sorry, as well as the negative stigma that surrounds those that have been formerly incarcerated, are to blame for high unemployment rates for those individuals. This is important because, aside from people needing jobs in order to survive, being unemployed raises an ex-prisoner's chances of going back to prison, which then leads to overcrowding within the facility and higher tax rates for all of us. 33 states have detention facilities operating at or above 100% capacity. To reiterate, to reiterate what Julia said, Kettle Moraine Correctional Institute specifically has 1,108 inmates in a facility built for only 783. This overcrowding issue means that it is unlikely that the facility has enough space to accommodate all of the prisoners and give them all the same opportunities for education and skill training. But the issue of overcrowding doesn't end with inmates, it also affects all of us. In Wisconsin, K-12 education and low-income health care are the only categories that receive more tax money than the correction system. Finally, without a job, these people are, are unable to contribute to taxes, which leads to everyone else paying more. So aside from the underperforming programs that already exist at Kettle Marine, we did look at a couple other existing solutions. Ban the Box is the first one. Um, it's a policy that was created and implemented by the Obama administration. Uh, it's currently seen in 37 different states. And the biggest problem with Ban the Box that we've seen is that it doesn't increase work experience or job skills for inmates applying for jobs. Uh, the next one is the Work Opportunity Tax Credit, or WOTC. Uh, this is a one-time tax credit that's paid to employers for hiring people who've been incarcerated. Uh, the idea is to increase workplace diversity. Uh, the, it's currently paid 20 to 40 percent of the employee's wages gets paid back to the employer for the first year. Uh, the biggest problem with Work Opportunity Tax Credit as well is it doesn't increase job skills or work experience. Um, inmates have a hard time being competitive when looking for jobs. And the last one is halfway house. Uh, it's kind of an umbrella term. Um, halfway house can be a, t a lot of different types of facilities. Uh, it's a transitional living space. Uh, the biggest problem with halfway houses is, is that it costs money to stay there every month, which a lot of people can't afford. And there's little educational opportunities, especially for post-secondary education. So in order to combat the high unemployment rates of formerly incarcerated individuals, our group has come up with a program entitled Help the Wanted. This program will be an extension of Kettle Moraine Correctional Institute and will give inmates at Kettle Moraine the opportunity to be moved to an off-site facility in which they will live and stay for the remainder of their sentence. This facility will become a training center where inmates can participate in a variety of programs and activities, all geared to help them prepare for the workforce after prison. The goals of our program are to prepare participants for re-entry into the workforce and to give them the necessary tools and experiences to become a qualified, competitive job applicant. So instead of building a new facility, our group has found a soon-to-be empty building, which is located in Sheboygan, Wisconsin, approximately 20 miles from Kettle Moraine. This building is currently being occupied by Aurora Memorial Hospital, which is planning on moving to a new location in early of 2022. So far, there are no plans for what will happen to the building after the move, and the city is currently seeking out a third-party developer to come in and do something with the space. This building is a six-story building, which we believe is the perfect size for our program. The hospital consists of many rooms and offices, which will be good for our inmates to live in. That way, we will not need to change or renovate the building in any way. The building location will also benefit our program because unlike Kettle Moraine, it is located in a more residential and populated area, which will allow us to work with several schools and businesses in the surrounding community. Participants of our program will receive their own room. This facility will also feature a cafeteria, gym, outdoor recreational area, and several study areas. We have predicted that about 90 people will be able to stay in this building. This will be about 15 people across the six floors. 
Those eligible to participate must be up for release from prison within the next 12 to 18 months and must have never been convicted of a violent offense. We also would like participants to be motivated and want to use our program to its full benefit. And then along with that, since we will be moving participants to a new facility, this will also aid in the overcrowding that Kettle Moraine is currently facing. As Julia mentioned, inmates in the facility will have access to education and jobs. Educational opportunities that will be offered at this facility include Kettle Moraine's pre-existing education that is equivalent to a high school education, Lakeshore Technical College, the UW Green Bay Sheboygan Campus, and Lakeland College. We especially want to work with Lakeshore Technical College or LTC because they have a wide variety of training programs and certificates available. Due to the COVID-19 pandemic, online classes have become much more accessible. Having this option for the inmates widens their educational opportunities. Because of this, the program will not need to hire teachers of their own or make specific spaces for classrooms within the facility. The only exception for attending these classes in person will be for hands-on experience. If special permission is granted, the inmates will be closely monitored when leaving the facility and we will work with the city bus system to allow a safe and reliable form of transportation. LTC is only about a 15 minute drive from where the Sheboygan Aurora Memorial Hospital currently stands, allowing this to be a reasonable commute. In addition to this, we will offer classes that will allow inmates to go through practice interviews to teach them how to fill out job applications, as well as teach them financial literacy and how to maintain a job. Outside of education, we'll also work with local companies to set up interviews for the inmates to help their chances of having a job upon release. If an inmate would have the opportunity to work before their release date, they will be allowed to with special permission and we will again work with the city bus system. There is also always the possibility of doing an online or work from home style job. So in order for our program to become fully implemented, the first step that we need to take is come up with a set plan for funding. One way in which we will pay for this program is through use of the Second Chance Pell Grant. This is a government funded grant that is given to incarcerated individuals who are pursuing a secondary education. This grant will go towards paying the tuition of those taking college courses. Kendall Moraine is currently using these grants so we will not need to do anything different to implement this program. We also plan to have current officers who are already working at Kettle Moraine also be transferred to the new facility with inmates. This will be a way for us to cut back on some of the costs of hiring new individuals. Kettle Moraine also has a volunteer program that we also are hoping to take advantage of. This will be another way for us to cut back on costs. Kettle Moraine has a current budget of over $28 million, which we are also hoping to use to pay for some of the operating costs of the building. We have roughly estimated that per year to operate and own the building would cost about $1.8 million, which seems like a lot, but with a budget of over $28 million, we would not be taking a whole lot from that. We are also hoping to partner with several organizations who would be willing to donate and provide extra services. One of these programs is Prison Fellowship, which helps prepare inmates for reentry into the society. Another organization is Jails to Jobs, which helps find work opportunities for prisons whilst, for inmates while still in prison. So then, in order for our program to become fully implemented, a few, new, few more steps would need to occur. First, we will be partnering with Kettle Moraine Correctional Institute, and in doing so, we will mainly be working with John Noble, who is the current prison warden. After we have partnered with Kettle Moraine, we will be presenting our solution to the Sheboygan City Council and hospital executives. During this presentation, we will include a detailed description of our program as well as what it has to offer. We will also be presenting how our program will be benefiting the surrounding communities by providing businesses with skilled employees. During this presentation, we will also be focusing on how our program will be safe for the surrounding neighborhoods. We will be working closely with the Sheboygan County Police Department as well as the Sheboygan County Jail, which is located just a mile from this facility. Once we have gained access to the building, we will then begin par picking participants to participate in our program. Once the hospital has completed its move and we are free to use the building, we will then begin moving resources and participants into the program and begin implementing our solution. Now there's many ways we can assume that our solution would be both sustainable and successful in the future. And the first thing is thanks to the type of change that it would be. 
Help the Wanted would be a long-term structural change to the way that Kettle Moraine currently operates. What I mean by that is each successive year, uh, the criminals that are currently in Kettle Moraine will also have the ability to join this program. And if uh, success is in our future, uh, more prisons can adopt it as well. All the necessary infrastructure we would need to implement our solution already exists. Like Julia mentioned, the building is already in operation right now, and it currently uh, includes all the amenities we would need to have someone live there, including wiring, ventilation, plumbing, and even Wi-Fi. Now, um, the main problem we would want to, no, you can go back, sorry, Julia. Uh, the main problem we want to address is unemployment, clearly. And in doing that, uh, we would assume that more people would then enter the workforce and be less likely to commit crimes and then return to Kettle Moraine in the future. Uh, this is formally known as the recidivism rate. And so in reducing this rate of recidivism, we would also see a decrease in the overcrowding of Kettle Moraine as well, uh, mainly because at any given time, there will be less people entering the prison as well as in the prison. And there are both societal and economic benefits to implementing our solution as well. From an economic standpoint, less taxpayer money would be spent each year on housing these inmates and could be put towards more profitable and beneficial programs for the community. And then society as a whole benefits because there's less people committing crimes. Uh, we would be providing education to the uh, prisoners and so this would help raise the average level of education within Kettle Moraine. And then once they leave and enter the workforce, this would make a more skilled workforce as a whole, which helps drive both uh, production of existing solutions as, or existing products as well as the innovation of future products. Like all solutions, we would have some barriers that we would have to overcome in order to implement it successfully. Um, first and foremost is its unfortunate location. Uh, it's bordered on three of its four sides by residential areas, and so it might be difficult to convince these residents that our solution is entirely safe. However, like we mentioned, all of our participants are nonviolent criminals, and so safety really wouldn't be too much of a concern. And if we needed to, we could easily and uh, cost-effectively implement some sort of physical barrier, such as a fence, if that would ease the residents' minds. Additionally, we might run into problems with reaching the private donors just because if they don't see direct personal benefit, they may not be as likely to invest in the program. And in that case, all the funding would then have to come from the state of Wisconsin through federal grants, as well as from Kettle Moraine's current operating budget. And so finally, if we did implement Help the Wanted, there's some research we could conduct on a yearly basis to help quantify our program success, given by these three measurables here. Uh, the first and most important is the employment rate, essentially the percentage of individuals who participate in our program and then once leaving Kettle Moraine, uh, go out and find long-term sources of income through employment. To calculate this, we would use the respective first equation on the bottom left uh, by taking the employed number of participants and dividing it by the total number for that year. Um, and in this sense, uh, a high percentage would conclude that we've been successful. Inversely, we could also calculate the Kettle Moraine return rate or the percentage of individuals who do not find em employment and thus commit crimes and return to Kettle Moraine. To calculate this, we would take the number of unemployed reoffenders and divide it by, again, the total number of participants. In this case, however, a low percentage would conclude that we've been successful. And then finally, just for fun, we could also calculate the annual expenses saved because money definitely talks. and. Um, to do this, we would take the employed number of individuals and multiply it by the average living expense per inmate. Uh, with Kettle Moraine, given their operating budget of $28 million and nearly 1,100 inmates, this is roughly $25,000 a year per inmate. And like I said, this would just be a rough estimate of how much money we save each year. As you can see, this is a problem that needs to be fixed. Not only is it cyclical in nature and causes a vast majority of other problems, such as overcrowding and high tax rates, but it's also the morally correct thing to do. People need jobs, and we want to give people jobs. We stand behind our solution, and we look forward to pushing it forward in the future. We hope that you all stand with us. Thank you. Right.
Thank you for uh, another great presentation. We do have time for some uh, questions or comments. Would anyone like to share some thoughts um, or ask a question? I'm curious if you've had any communication with current inmates as you put this together. Um, we have not talked with any of the inmates at Kettle Moraine at this time. Um, we did have a little bit of a problem trying to contact people, and they're not offering the opportunity for people to come in and visit at this time still because of COVID. Um, so there just wasn't really a lot of opportunity, unfortunately, to contact anybody. Yeah, and how realistic do you think it will be to get the building? Um, well, we think that we will be able to get the building mainly because we do have the surrounding neighborhood safety at our best interest. Um, that has been kind of our first priority. We've implemented a lot of things that will make it safe for them. Um, so we're hoping that the city is able to see that. And we're also hoping that if we are able to have more of these people employed, that will decrease the amount of crime happening and the amount of people going back to prison. Um, so therefore, we're kind of making society better as a whole, and we're also hoping that the city is able to see that as well. I don't have a microphone but going off of that. Um, it would be an additional cost to bulldoze the building, and so rather than doing that, we can save them money and actually pay them to turn it into something that would be beneficial. Are there other questions or comments? All right. Have you thought about partnering with uh, uh, unions that uh, represent the skilled trades? Uh, that might be a way to get your, your clients employed. And uh, they could perhaps even use uh, apprenticeships and work for the city uh, to cut the city costs. Yeah, um, that's not something that I guess we've specifically gone over, but that would be something that we would be willing to do and implement, especially if it would help us um, make our services go further. Great. Are there other questions, comments? If not, um, I have more of a comment than a question. I just think it's really important, having known uh, a number of people that have really struggled to find employment after serving time in prison. Um, it is incredibly important work, so thank you for all your thoughts. Uh, with that, let's um, uh, give them one more round of applause, and then we will transition <laughs> to our next group.